Okay, we're live now back in Egypt, Sheikh Sheikh Resort City, where the UN Climate Summit called COP27 is taking place. Emmanuel Macron, the Francis president, is uh, on the podium making his presentation. Let's listen in. For other meetings in 2021 on this, we know that nature is our best ally to achieve the Paris uh, uh, targets. They're the two sides of the same coin, and it also shows that those countries that are often seen as the most poor are the solutions to fighting against climate change. Those countries that have biodiversity reserves, whether marine or land-based, have incalculable carbon resources and deposits, and we must therefore help them to bring these nature-based solutions to the fore. And I'm thinking in particular of the critical ecosystems, ancient uh, forests, uh, peat bogs, uh, wetlands, and mangroves, which have the greatest carbon stocks and the most biodiversity. If these ecosystems are destroyed, vast carbon reserves will be released and annihilate any chances of achieving our goal. There are more than already 100 countries to have a 30% protection target, an initiative that we launched in early 2021 and which we are carrying forward with Costa Rica. And I'm hoping that COP15 on biodiversity will confirm this decision and take us even further. We must therefore urgently recognize these ecosystems as having a particular statue status and propose to those states hosting them to have political and financial partnerships in place to help them preserve them. So we must look at the flows, but we must also support those countries to help them to preserve these biodiversity treasures. And it's for this reason that this morning we launched, along with several states present in the room, Colombia, Gabon, Rwanda, and several representatives of indigenous peoples and the Philippines, China, the United States, and the Europeans, we launched an initiative to do what we're working with the emitters on the JetP and to set up a positive preservation program and to come up with country by country contracts, partnerships, working with NGOs, especially Conservation International, and to come up with a method that will enable us to finance the preservation of these places, these spaces, and partnerships that will help up with legal, political, and financial tools to preserve these ecosystems. We came up with initiatives for these contracts this morning, and Gabon, Colombia, and the Philippines have already signed on, and we will be in Libreville in early 2023 to come up with concrete action plans in the One Forest Initiative that was just mentioned by President Ali Bongo just now. This is the same type of initiative that will be undertaken to protect oceans with insight the 2025 UN United Nations Conference. The ocean must be a new frontier for cooperation and multilateralism. So once again, we must do our utmost to preserve climate and biodiversity initiatives. And let me be clear, France will be spearheading these commitments, and that is the reason why we are supporting the prohibition of any uh, seabed exploitation. I would like to confirm this position, and I will do so in other international forum. This morning, we also launched a high-level group to come up with a methodology for biodiversity credits and to also looking ahead to the first quarter of 2023 to have a common method in place. And the last and fourth point was climate justice. We have undertaken the commitments, and today we have every confidence, with the confidence is actually frittering away between Global North and Global South. And what I said a few weeks ago in the United Nations, we have to avoid this division in the world on the war and on the climate as well. <coughs> We have heard many countries talk about the 100 billion since Copenhagen that has not yet come in. We must really come to terms with this concept of financial solidarity. We have 4 billion already uh, 
committed and move towards 100 billion and make sure that those who have committed to disburse the monies and to find bilateral or multilateral mechanisms to make sure that they step up to their commitments to deliver this money so it is delivered to the global south. Otherwise, we will lose the confidence of the global south and therefore very quickly the 100 billion will be achieved. We're already at 82, but we need to do much more to deliver fully. We must also have solidarity around adaptation. France has been uh, investing 6 billion each year, which is the fair share of this agreement since uh, Paris. And we also dedicate 2 million of that to adaptation. So all Developed countries, rich countries must uh, deliver on their commitments and I will be speaking to my colleagues from such countries to make sure that we overcome the political obstacles and I want to hail many of the leaders in this world who are working valiantly to overcome these political um, hurdles. Beyond these figures, we must have specific actions in place with the most affected areas and come up with partnerships that deliver this justice. And this is what we wanted to do with the great uh, green wall in the Sahel, Sahel. And this is yielding results. We saw a record number of pledges with almost 19 billion euros. But last year, we disbursed 2.5 billion euros on the ground with projects that will help us both to uh, mitigate climate change and adapt to it and also to reforest and tackle desertification. So this is a chance for us to deal with climate, biodiversity, and also provide economic opportunities to the most fragile countries by providing them with the opportunity to achieve food sovereignty and to uh, do this through the vegetable protein supply chains. We also have initiatives to come up with more effective partnerships with NGOs on the ground and to tackle this issue of just climate justice. But today, we must go beyond the 100 billion and the other initiatives on the ground. And let me close with this. We need a huge financial shock of concessional financing. There's this whole issue of loss and damage. And here I wish to welcome the courage and strength of many African, Caribbean, Pacific, and Latin American leaders who have been carrying this debate. And they're saying, you can't talk about the past because there was always justice, but now we want to talk to you about the future. And they have every right to say so, because not only do we have, have we not emitted as much as you in the past, but you also prevented us from developing as we wish to do. But we will be if affected by the consequences of what usually happens to us more quickly than it does to you, because we are more vulnerable. We have coastal states that are more affected because we have geographic realities that make us more fragile and vulnerable than you, and they have every right to say so. This is a just and debate. So all countries, some of them in an intermediary position, some, are them, some of them are emergent, some are poor, and they underwent a shock that asymmetrically affected the whole world, and we're doing exceptional things. We have mobilized exceptional financing, and we're saying, they're saying, what, what is happening to us is exceptional. No more water under our soils, or no more groundwater, etc. And now we can no longer do business as usual, and they have every right to say so. So we must make a sea change, move the needle on this. We were already behind, and we're even more behind now. So we must ensure that we are dealing with the issue of SD. Ours and providing the 100 billion to the more poorest countries. So we're dealing with the climate. And in the G20, we will move from 30% and work with those who have not yet delivered on their commitments. But we will also, we launched an initiative with Mia Motley of Barbados, and I wanted to welcome her.
force of character and what she's brought to this debate. And we have set up a group of wise minds at the highest level to come up with financing, climate financing solutions. So next spring, not in another year or two years, next spring, we called on the IMF, the World Bank and the OECD to come up with concrete solutions to activate these innovative financing solutions and to help us to provide access to new liquidities to have a new start for countries, including MIX, who are affected by these shocks, and together to make sure that we can have solutions that take into account the climate vulnerability of many countries, and to mobilize exceptional financing, private, as well as public and private, but more importantly, all together we must change the rules. The rules of our major international banks, the development banks, the IMF and the World Bank and our major lenders and say that what you're asking of us in terms of debt, reimbursement and guarantees, when we are affected by a climate shock, when we are a victim of a climate accident, to some degree, there must be a suspension of those conditions, and those must be taken into account. So with emerging countries, developing countries, and mix, we will be continuing this work to completely change and shift our thinking on this, otherwise it will be too late. So this is in partnership with uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados, and we are embarking on this initiative to ensure that next spring, we will have these proposals and we will see a proposed changing of those rules and the provisions and in the spring meetings of the World Bank and IMF and the major lenders, that will be a practical step. We can't wait for the next COP. That will be too long. I have taken too long and I must apologize, but we have begun but let us not slow down because all these successive crises are saying the same thing to us. The injustices in today's world are unsustainable. I cannot be tolerated any longer. And the crises are aggravating these injustices. So we can only emerge from this by rethinking how we can act in solidarity in the private and public spheres. This is what must change, nothing else. And it is for this reason that this African COP, hosted by Egypt, whom I'd like to think once again, will enable us to do so. Thank you. Uh, that's Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, uh, speaking at uh, the UN Climate Summit COP27 in Chamal Sheikh. The two week conference uh, is just getting underway for the second day. We've got about two more weeks to go for this very high profile event that brings in more than 100 world leaders together to discuss the state of the global climate.